And what we're now going to do with that one is we're just going to hold down control. I'm going to drag that onto our congas channel so that we can get something happening with the congas. So if we play those on their own, as you can hear, we're already getting something quite interesting happening. We might just adjust our offset just so that we're affecting a different conga hit and getting the re repeats coming in at a slightly different time than the snare just to add an extra bit of flavour in there. We might filter that slightly higher, bring down our volume decay, and we might also just pitch the repeats down a little bit there. Let's bring the volume up a little bit more, just to help bring the repeats out a little more. And we might turn our grid up slightly. As we mentioned before, you can also put extra effects on the beat repeat chain. So for example, we can create a bit of a delayed repeat effect there by chucking a ping pong delay on the, the beat repeat chain. And as you can hear, that adds that nice extra bit of width to it and gives us even more of an interesting sound to play with. So if we bring that one in with the snare, we just bring down our snare repeat volume a little bit. As you can see, we're getting something quite interesting happening already. So rather than using a preset for our next element, what we might do is we might just grab hold of just the beat repeat effect on its own and we're going to chuck that one on our hi-hats. Again, just for that extra bit of flexibility, we're going to select the gate option with this one, right click it and we're going to group it so that it's in an audio effects rack. Again, we'll just rename this one to beat repeat so we know what it is. and we'll rename the other one to clean so we know that that one's the clean original sound. So we'll just play our hi-hats. I'm going to turn our interval down to half a bar. As you can hear, we're already getting something quite interesting. If we mute the beat repeat chain, you can hear the hi-hats on their own, which is fairly plain. However, with the beat repeat activated, we're getting some nice interesting sound in there. Again, we might just pitch this down a little bit and turn on our filter. And because we're getting the same repeat every time, we might also add a bit of variation and turn on our no triplet control there. bring down our grid a little bit, a bit more variation, and as you can see it's just a matter of manipulating the different controls to see what sort of a different feel you can come up with there. So the other element we're going to chuck the beat repeat effect onto for the moment is our tambourine. So again, if we just select our effects rack, hold down control and drag that one onto our tambourine channel. And we'll just play our tambourine. We might leave the pitch of the repeats the same as the originals and instead use the filter to give us a bit of a different feel with this one. Bring down our grid a little bit, a little bit less variation on this one. And just add a bit of volume decay to help the repeats fall away there. 
Again, if we turn the beat repeat chain off, you can hear the tambourines just on their own. And if we bring that one back in, just giving us that extra interesting sort of feel there. So if we play that whole beat together with those four different beat repeat effects on some of the different elements, As you can see, we've now got that interesting bit of randomness and variation and just that extra bit of sparkle and feel to the drum sound. If you want to be a bit more extreme, you can also feel free to chuck a beat repeat effect over the whole sound and we'll see what that'll do to it. So we might just bring up our offset a little bit just so that we're not affecting the kick drum. We might bring our interval down to a quarter of a bar so that we can get even more repeats in there. We might bring our grid up a little bit. Let's turn on our no triplets button. Bit of variation and we'll see what we get. So as you can see, many different uses for the beat repeat effect. I also recommend trying some automation with some of the different parameters if you're using Live's arrangement view. Or even if you're using the clip view, you can feel free to use the envelopes to be able to automate the different parameters. So I hope you've enjoyed our beat repeat tutorial. Hope you've got something useful that you can take away and have a bit of a play with with your own Ableton Live sets. Feel free to experiment and try all sorts of different combinations and see what you can come up with. So make sure you check out our website, conservatoriumofaudio.com, for more free tutorials, paid tutorials, and some quite good FAQ articles. And I hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.